Do you think Putin wants to, ever wanted to or currently wants to conquer Ukraine and Eastern Europe? Oh, no. I, I've never thought that. You know, looking back to going back to the Clinton administration, um, when when Putin first became president at the very tail end of Bill Clinton's presidency, mm -hmm. he floated the idea of Russia joining NATO. And Clinton said, yeah, I don't think we really like that. Of idea. Russia? Yeah, Russia joining NATO. Because the Soviet Union's gone. We're all friends mm -hmm. now, right? right. Peace, the peace dividend, we're always talking about. How are we going to spend the peace dividend? Right. We don't need to spend money on defense anymore. Right. Hardy har har. <laughs> so... Uh, Clinton's like, eh, we don't really like that idea very much. And he said, okay, if you won't let Russia and NATO, at least don't allow any of the countries on our border to join NATO. And Clinton said, that we can agree to. Next thing you know, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, and Poland all join NATO. Directly on the Russian border. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, you promised us that you wouldn't let any of these countries join NATO. Ah, sorry. We changed our minds. Right. Yeah, you know, strategic planning and all. Then when Obama becomes president um, at a summit with Putin, Putin said, I spoke with Clinton years ago about Russia joining NATO. It's something that we would like to explore. Who and said this again? Putin. Putin. To Obama. And Obama said, no, nah, we, don't, we, we, don't, we don't like that idea. We don't think that's going to happen. And he said, okay, well, you guys lied to me about these other countries joining NATO. So don't allow Ukraine to join NATO. This is going to be a serious problem otherwise. And he's like, okay, okay, we won't. And then uh, Joe Biden becomes president. And he's like, oh, you know, Ukraine would be a great addition to NATO and the European Union... And the Russians said, we've had enough. There was a pro-Russian government in Ukraine that was overthrown at the urge of the United States in 2014, as if that wasn't bad enough. As soon as that happens, then they want to talk about Ukraine joining NATO. So the Russians said, we've had enough. That's the background to Ukraine. I don't think that the Russians have any... I, I don't think that they're expansionist as a matter of policy they have a history of expansionism certainly mm -hmm. just like we do the chinese do not but but we do and the russians do um but we don't expand that way right we expand in a weird way of just gaining influence over the country we don't make them party like we, it's not a we don't like america is not a traditional empire like you look at the british empire right like correct we, we just have these other countries that depend on us and we basically control that we have all the influence in those countries yeah but then the libyans would say that's wrong and the afghans would say that's wrong and uh you know the the chinese would say that's wrong because of what we're doing with the uh, taiwan now it's wrong and what it's wrong that we do it or it's not true well it, it's not true oh look oh. at look at libya just as the easiest example um Steve Kappas, who was the deputy director of the CIA, made a made a secret at the time, not secret anymore, trip to Libya uh, in the immediate aftermath of the start of the Iraq war. And he said, look, Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction. He's going to die. We know that you have weapons of mass destruction, so you can either give them all to us and we all live happily ever after or you can die. I'm paraphrasing, of course. And so... For only the second time in the history of the planet, with South Africa being the first, Libya voluntarily gave up its weapons of mass destruction program. And then we overthrew them anyway. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Hillary Clinton famously said, um, we came, we saw, he died. What's that? Is our word worth nothing? Right. What sort of weapons did they have? They had a nuclear program? They did not have a nuclear program, but they had a quite a robust chemical weapons program okay. uh, and a biological weapons program. But the thing with biological weapons is you can have a BW program just, you know, in your kitchen. Right. You, you don't need gigantic mm -hmm. laboratories or factories for BW like you do for CW. And then you need reactors and such for, for nuclear. Mm. Mm -hmm. So 
what is Russia's concern with NATO? Why why should Russia be concerned about NATO? The Russians really believe that we intend to someday invade them and overthrow their government. They really believe it. I, that's crazy to you and me. It doesn't seem crazy. But, but they, they really believe it. And, you know, if you look at it, one of my best friends is also my attorney. He's a former deputy attorney general of the United States. And uh, we talk every single day about these kinds of issues. And he told me the other day, very frankly, why the fuck is Montenegro in NATO? Like, are we going to actually, first of all, who's going to, who's going to invade Montenegro? And even if somebody does invade Montenegro, we're really going to commit our young men and women to, you know, defend to the death, the government of Montenegro. Come on. Right. He said, if you look at the NATO charter, the NATO charter was to protect member countries against the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union doesn't exist anymore. So why is there a NATO? Mm. You know, and in the charter, it says it was to defend the member countries. So why do we have, why did we have NATO troops in Afghanistan? Afghanistan's not in Europe and it's not a member country. Why do we have NATO troops in Syria or in Iraq or in Libya or in the Sahel? And that wasn't even revealed to the American people. That was revealed by accident. Why do we have NATO troops in these countries? They're not being threatened by the Soviet Union. So the Russians see this and they're like, dang, these NATO people, they're willing to do anything. This is frightening. Why won't any U.S. presidency or, or anybody in the U.S. consider Russia becoming a part of NATO? I don't know. I never understood that. I never understood that because if, if Russia's asking for it, if yeah. Putin is asking for it, saying, I want to be friends. Yeah. What is the real reason why we don't want to be friends? You know, I think in part, and forgive me if this is, if this sounds overly cynical, but I think in part that this policy is really determined by the defense contractors. Right. We, we have a permanent, we live in a permanent wartime economy post 9-11. Our defense budget is bigger than the next eight largest countries combined, right? We can't make, we, we can't make payments on our national debt, interest payments on the national debt. And, and we're going to bankrupt social security because everything goes to defense. Um, but if we cut the defense budget, it push the whole economy into recession. Right, right, right. So you have to have an enemy to justify a budget like that. What's this? According to NATO, Russia cannot be considered a partner due to its hostile actions and oh, policies. Oh, there it is. It's because of its hostile actions and policies. NATO considers Russia to be a direct threat to the security of its allies, as well as to the stability of peace in the Euro-Atlantic area. NATO cities, NATO cites Russia's war in Ukraine as a reason for this. 